Hello and welcome to Lenrix Realm. I am Matt and in this video we are going on an exquisite adventure. Dungeons and Dragons. It is arguably the most popular tabletop RPG out there. Just like Warhammer, the name itself is almost like a synonym for a whole hobby. For almost 50 years now, players explore fantastical realms, fight through dark dungeons and have strange social encounters with drunken dwarves in the tavern. These three pillars of adventures are at the heart of every D&D campaign and bring with them a different set of challenges for you, the Dungeon Master. A few weeks ago I showed you my map of the island in my current campaign. But until now the adventure took place in this little harbour town called Goldhaven. There the players explored the town, fought the town guards and had a strange social encounter with the drunken dwarf in the tavern. Now they are on the verge of leaving Goldhaven and starting to explore more of this island. And for this I need another map. When I started this campaign, I wanted to make sure that I don't plan everything beforehand. And that included the lay of the land. The map you see here has some landmarks for sure, but like historic maps, these additions may or may not be just figments of imagination or legends. So what is or what isn't there is for the players to explore, with a little help from random tables. Since the earlier days of Dungeons and Dragons, this approach to exploration was facilitated by the use of a specific tool, the hex crawl. Introduced in the first D&D edition via the use of the board game called Auto Survival, a hex crawl allows the player to move from area to area while the dice decide what to find there. With this approach, the map is filled out, hex by hex. Now if you want to try this yourself, there is this wilderness kit, which gives you rules, resource tracker and this fancy DM screen. And of course there are hex maps. I however wanted to have something a bit more visually interesting for my players. Way back when I started with D&D, I wanted to have a set of dungeon tiles that would be flexible and quick to use. On Thingiverse I found this set of magnetic hexagon tiles and instantly liked it. So I printed a lot of the frames and bought a few laser cut wooden hex tiles. The idea was to be able to build dungeon rooms and encounter areas on the fly with this system. Everybody with experience in DMing which I had not at that point, would probably see the problem right there. Instead of throwing down a battle map and a few minis, I would fumble around with little wood tiles while my players would have a half an hour break. So I quickly abandoned the idea, but kept the printed stuff just in case I had an idea for using the system once again. I guess you can see where I'm going with this. I needed a hex crawl map and I had a hexagon dungeon tile system that I no longer wanted to use. So why not bring them both together? I wanted the hex map to represent this little peninsula on the south side of my island. For the board I decided to go with this honeycomb board, which I had laying around because of a project that I never came around to realize. I cut it to size and started to lay out the hexes. Here I tried different approaches. My first idea was to have the complete board filled with the hexes, but I decided to go with a layout that resembled the geographical form of the peninsula. With that in mind, I glued the hexagon frames to the board with a universal adhesive, but when that ran out, I went with PVA, which also worked. Now I wanted the outlying line of the hexes to merge with the ocean, 
after that I glued the line of clean wood tiles into the frame on the outside. With my old friend air drying clay, I sculpted a simple transition to the cardboard surface. As always, this would take a while to dry, so I left it overnight. Now for the coastline, I added a second row of clear tiles. This way I could draw a continuous line that would give me an indication where to put that aforementioned coastline. I removed the tiles again and marked them with numbers, so I could remember later where to put them. With texture paste, I filled in the areas in the middle of the frames just to have something different than a plain cardboard surface. I also painted the outlying area with a Mod Podge and Black Primer mix to seal the cardboard surface. Now I could paint the ocean with the airbrush. I kept it very simple here with a dark blue as the first layer and added a light blue for the areas near the coast. I also primed the textured areas in the middle black. Now the next step was to add the texture for the ocean. For this I used this acrylic water texture paste by Vallejo. I applied it on all the areas that would be ocean in a stippling motion. With this simple application method, the paste automatically gets a wavy and watery look. I let the paste dry and painted the textured area in the center of the hex frames in dark brown and then burnt sienna. Now I still had those tiles for the coastline to craft. The approach for them was pretty straightforward. For the land side, I applied the same texture paste I used for the middle of the map. I let it dry and painted the water side the same way as the rest of the ocean. After that I re-established the earth tones with leather brown by Vallejo and with a sandy off-white I stipped it on the coastline. I also dry brushed it over the rest of the land side. As a finishing touch I applied these pigments to have a more natural looking land area. I also used isopropyl alcohol to seal the pigments. After that I added the water texture the same way I did with the ocean. Now with that I could add the tiles back to their designated places and the map was ready for the next session. I'm very happy with this map and I'm very excited to see what awaits my adventurers on this peninsula. Now I just need a few random tables to fill those hexes with. I hope you like this video. If you do, why not leave a like or subscribe to my channel. Also if you know any hex puns, put them down in the comments. I'm excited to read them. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, farewell fellow adventurers.